Hi everyone and welcome to Monday Night Stamping. Uh, this is a place where we come together to chat, to connect and to create and we have some fun doing so. Um, tonight my husband's all excited because it's the NFL uh, Monday Night Football is back on and that's how I got my name for this Monday Night Stamping because in talking he said that he I said when must be a good time for me to do a Facebook Live and he said how about Monday nights because it's Monday Night Football. So we do Monday Night Stamping while he's watching Monday Night Football. I'm Lillian, a Stamper's Niche, uh, an independent Stamping Up demonstrator coming to you from Alberta, Canada. And today's date is September the 9th, 2024. So um, I'm so glad to see so many of you hopping on already. Today really felt like the first day of fall here. We went out for a little bit of a walk and it just it had a real fall feel to the air. All weekend it was really warm. We even hit 30 or maybe even a little bit more, which is unusual for this time of year here. Um, but it's feeling like fall and we were eating corn out of the garden and it was all great. So as I go down to, um, to go, <laughs> sorry, I just caught a, a so husband has hockey, so I'm able not to be disturbed too. It was perfect. I got distracted by your comment. Um, and so we've got kindred spirits here. Um, as I go down to my desktop, I want you to maybe leave a comment. Or just say hi or um, even give the thumbs up. Just let us know you're here. But so I like to give you something to ch begin the chat. And what are some colors you are crafting with right now? I tend to go a bit seasonal, so maybe you do too. So what are some colors you're crafting with right now? And you can enter that or your high or whatever in the comment. And we will go down to my desktop. Love, love how seeing all your names popping up and all the hellos and the, everybody welcoming each other. It's it's so great. The community we've le we've learned to uh, or we've connected with through this craft is just amazing. So, what are colors that you are crafting with right now? If you're not crafting, what are you decorating with, or what are you drawn to? I guess would be um, something there. I've just got the computer up and going. Um, pretty peacock, yes. The pretty peacock is a pretty color for this time of the year, isn't it, Bonnie? I'm, I really, really like it. I've used it a bit too. So as you're putting that in, I want to draw your attention to the front cover of the mini catalog. We're going to go back and work with the Humble Home Bundle tonight. And it's featured here. We used, whoops, there goes my glue. Um, we did it in this fun fold we made a couple of weeks ago like that. Um, so we used it here, but we're going to use it some more tonight. So we're going to look at this and you can find it on page, pages 40, page 46, right there. And you'll see some more samples there and you see what all is involved. Now, when Joanne and Marilyn and I did our live catalog reveal for the mini catalog and if you miss that i'll put the link in the comments afterwards we shared all kinds of samples from the catalog one of the things i shared was this little treat holder and several of you said i would like to make that so i thought why not do that tonight so we're going to make this little treat holder and then i'm going to show you all kinds of variations we're going to actually not make this exact one. I wanted to make one that was a little more fallish in color. So we're going to be making that and move this out of the way. And believe it or not, we are going to use this gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Now this might not look like a little log cabin to you right off the bat. So what is this called? This is called Regal Winter and it is found in the mini catalog as well. So let's take a quick look at it. So we've got these flowers here, and then on the back, we've got just tone on tone, more monochromatic. And then we've got this one, and you might be saying, that looks like the other one, because that's, that's what I thought. 
but you'll notice that some of the flowers are a different color. There are a little more purples in this one. And then on the back of this one are the monochromatic blues. Isn't that rich looking? Then we've got Pretty Peacock, just what you were talking about there, Bonnie. And on this side, Wild Wheat. So, And then here we've got some more. And then our purples and blackberry bliss and then this such so rich uh, at first i wasn't sure if i liked this color and um then i thought this package of paper and then i started to play with it and i actually absolutely love it you can't wait to see what i do with this well do you know what maggie i uh, i was a little surprised myself so let's put that away and bring, whoops, cut all of it away, and bring in what we're going to work with. We are going to work with this piece here. So it's got the pretty peacock on the back and the wild wheat on this side. And well, I'm just going to get started and show you. So I'm going to, I got looking at it and to me, fall also, um, calls forth like, like coppers and um, metallic types of things. So I thought, well, I'm going to put a roof. I, I really like this design. I thought this could be the main part of the house. It looks a little bit like bricks. Let me just bring that up closer. So like that. But I wanted to put a metallic roof on it, a copper roof. So I'm going to bring in the roof stamp right here and my Versamark, and if you, some of you are new, you, uh, um, I always store my embossing buddy right with my Versamark. That reminds me to use it, otherwise I was forgetting all the time. So I'm going to ink up this, and I know from playing around that this paper, as you can see, is about the right size for the punch. So if I stamp towards the top, it'll be all good. So I'm doing that. And did you know with the glass mat, you don't need a spongy surface to um, stamp with our photopolymer stamps. It just works perfectly without. Don't ask me why, but it does. Now we're going to emboss that. So we'll sprinkle some copper embossing powder on. This is from the new embossing powder and I am really impressed with our new embossing powder. It is called Wow, Metallics Wow, and it just works perfectly. Okay, I'm going to heat up the heat tool, so a little bit of noise going to happen here. This heat tool is on its last legs, I think, but it's still hanging in there. My good one is downstairs in my classroom, so there. Look at the copper on the peacock. Isn't that gorgeous? How many times have I said, isn't that gorgeous already? Sorry about that. So now what we're going to do, we're actually just going to make sure that that's cool and it is. We're going to tuck this in. What's going on? There we go. We're going to center the roof line and we're not going to worry about the rest. Now this punch also punches out hearts and windows and even a little holder for a ribbon or twine or whatever. But just like that, we have, I better grab my little window. Oh, well, it's okay. I'll put that there. And now we have the little house, just like that. So then I thought, well, what? how can I make this still look fallish? So I thought, well, some leaves are always a good thing. So, but there are no leaves in this set. So I went looking and I found some leaves. Now you likely have leaves somewhere. This is the from the Adorning Hearts Hybrid um, set. And I pulled out these and this. And I went and got the textured metallic paper. And so it comes in sort of a, a pewter. I did an extra one in case I needed a little extra help. It comes in pewter, gold, and copper. So I cut some copper ones out like that. And I 
cut some wild wheat ones out. So this is the back of the paper, just in case. I have no idea if we're going to use it or not, but this was my plan. I was thinking that if we put this down here, now because I'm making a treat holder, I know that I don't want to go too low because I, this is going to be um, flush with the table or whatever. So if we go like that, we could add these in. Might be a bit much. Then I went with and got the uh, Neutral Tones Linen Thread. I have used so much of this. Look at the green is almost gone. I am finding it goes with everything. Now, that would, does that look like a fall house to you? What do you think? Is that starting to look fallish? Or should I add these um, wild wheat ones in as well? Tell me, should I add the wild wheat or not? Just say wild or no, yes or no. I guess we can go that way, yes or no. Which do you think? Whoops. I'm not seeing anything. Wild wheat, yes or no? No. Okay, thank you. We will go with this. So I'm going to uh, glue this down. I could use my glue dots too. So we'll put this about here. And because I'm going to put the bow over top, I don't have to worry too much about the join. That'll cover up any of the unevenness there. Sort of tie it all together. Just a little dab. It's a brand new glue bottle. It's got lots of glue in it. There we go. Whoops, stuck to my finger. Good thing I'm wearing black pants. I can rub my fingers on the pants. There we go. And then this is going to go on here. So we could either put it on with the green glue or with a glue dot. So I'm going to bring in a glue dot, I think. And some of you ask, why do I have twine tied around my glue dots? That's to keep it from unraveling. Um, I don't know if you've ever had glue dots unravel and stick to everything. So that's that's just a little trick I learned somewhere along the way. There we go. We'll decide later if we want to trim that off. I'm going to put these all up here so I don't lose them. But isn't it neat how that paper that was so florally now looks like a house. We could have stamped the doors and windows on and embossed them like that. Or, or we could have stamped this and cut these out. But I just thought this looked good. Now we need a box to, to hold the treat. So what I did is I started with a piece of paper that's two and a half by two and three quarters, and I scored at three quarters all the way around. So I'll put that up there in case you're still trying to take note of that. Bring in my paper trimmer. So three quarters all the way around. So I just slide it into the three quarters, score, rotate, a quarter turn, score at three quarters, and just keep going until you've scored at three quarters all the way around. Just like that. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to cut up on opposite sides, just cut up to the score line. So just up to there and up to there. And then I'm going to take a little, I'm gonna bring my scrap paper, take a little wedge out of the flaps. And I'm even gonna take a little wedge out of this because it's gonna be at the top and it's just gonna make it easier to work with. like that and we're going to do the same on this side now are you supposed to fold first before you cut or not doesn't matter it's whatever you want to do so there's a good question do you when you're making a 3d item 
Do you fold first and then cut, or do you cut first and then fold? I tend to, it all sort of just depends on my mood, I think. So there we go. We'll burnish all of those folds nice and sharp with the bone folder. Like that. So now we have this shape here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and actually today, I am going to put the flaps on the outside. It really doesn't matter, but the reason I'm putting the flaps on the outside is this is the side that's going to be covered. Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm putting them on the inside um, because I forgot I don't have a house for the back right now. So we will put some tear and tape. You want a strong adhesive here. You could use your liquid glue. You could use seal plus. You want something a little stronger because this is going to be a box. So there we go. I'm going to move this away and I'm going to bring in my take your pick tool because I find that helps get underneath the edges here and peel the backing off. Just like that and I see that this is hanging over the edge so I'm just going to fold it over. So we're going to fold those in and line up this edge with the fold and if you're a little off it's no big deal. So there we've got one side of the box and now we have the other side like that. And I came up with these measurements because I wanted the edge of the box to be slightly smaller than the, the house. Can you see that the house sticks over a bit? The first one I made when I was designing it, it was flush with the edges and it, it didn't work very well. So that that was my thinking. And you could make this this part as long as you want it, but that seemed to work for me. Now I'm going to glue the house onto here. So I'm putting the glue there instead of the house because it's going to not be, the whole house is not going to be stuck down. So now I'm going to flip it over and guide, wiggle it around till it's about in the middle. And just like that, you have a little treat holder so you cut and then fold Fran yeah I I do that quite often and then every once in a while I do something else you just never know what I'm going to do so I am going to bring in no I'm not going to bring that in I am going to bring in the Druzy embellishments so Druzy and if you're like me and happen to clue what Druzy means, I looked it up. And you know how when you go into rock stores or gem shops and you can see these kinds of things? Well, the, the sparkly gems in the center when you open up these rocks is called a Druzy. So it's a ge geological term. Basically, it means it sparkles. So. We could put, let's see, should we put one in here? These are quite flat, which is really nice. We'll put it right, or do we want to put it there? We could put it right on top of the bow. How's that? There we go. So we've got that. And there you have your treat holder. Now this is big enough to hold a couple of Hershey Kisses. It will hold just barely a lint chocolate. So can't you just see that on your dining room table for Thanksgiving? Oh, I better trim some of those, those edges, these off a little bit, I think. Oh, I need my ribbon scissors. Those paper scissors are getting pretty dull. So there you go, just like that. So let me just show you a few other ideas. So this is the one that I showed during the catalog reveal. 
and I emboss this with white embossing powder and then I put another house on the back. Now one of the nice things about this set is it, it's not just Christmas. So it's thank you, it's thank you for coming, welcome from our house to yours. It's got the to and from, it's got the little wreath, it's got all kinds of goodies in it. So I um, was playing around when I was planning for this class and this was my original little house. So I did the, use the um, wild wheat paper. I stamped on it. I didn't have the metallic, so I stamped on it with Blackberry Bliss, I believe, and then had the leaves coming out the side. So that was, those were from the same paper. This was from the reveal. This was my very first try, so I was just using basic white uh, and stamped Merry Christmas right on here, and then the to and from on the back like that. And then today I wanted to try some more looks. We know how to make the treat holder now. So what are some more looks? And I looked at this because when in doubt you always go to the catalog, right? And I looked at this one right here and it looked like it had been colored. And so I thought, well, let me just see here. And so that's what I did. I used my blends and colored it like that and then used some of the enamel effects to add the extra little detail on the door. So that's that. Can't you just see making a whole village of these houses? So you could go Halloweenish and go black like that. So I just put the windows in di or so that they look like a diamond. Um, this one here, I used, so this was on um, pecan pie. Then I tried it on early espresso. So the white just pops on that. So you can see I was having a little bit of fun. And then I thought, well, I could see using these for a baby shower, for a bridal shower, for a birthday party. So I, th I was thinking, what if it was a unicorn theme? So I we went with these colors and you could then um, switch it up and make it for a birthday party or for a baby shower or for whatever. And then I was playing some more. Now, like we embossed this one here, I just embossed the roof with white. And then when I punched it out, it was very easy to do this cut here. And look how you can change the look on a house. So if we put this on here, it looks like snow on there. So there's another little little trick that you can do. Or if you put it on here, or you could change up the color of the roof, all that you wanted. So those were some of the plays that I was having with the houses. And I have a whole bunch more projects. So I'm just going, you know me, I get on a roll and then I don't know when to stop. So, um, Tell me, while I'm getting the other things out, which of these houses is your favorite one? Or which one are you most drawn to? So I stamped the house, uh, just like on here. And then I just punched out a second one and tied some linen thread. And then these, this is a gift tag holder just to fasten onto a bag. So I did that. Um, I stamped... The, um, the roof and the doors and windows and all of that onto designer paper. So this is the uh, Nests of Winter designer paper I stamped on. It looks birchy. Um, so, and then used the letters. I had that substitute for the O and home. And so we've got home here. And those of you who know me know I love pebbled path and white. And I just couldn't resist. So I put the white... Um, basic white onto the, our foam sheets and cut them out. So the dies do cut right through the foam sheets as well. So that makes that nice and sturdy. And then I cased the catalog and I made this tag here. I just thought this would be perfect for a welcome home or welcome to a new home, that kind of thing. So we've got this tag and that's right from the catalog. Um, and you can see I stamped the bricks here and um, it's just just so good. Now, this also could be put on the card. It doesn't have to stay as a tag. So here's a tag I made, but put it on the card. 
and I just again punched it out of designer paper. It's just a quick and easy way to make a card. And then I received this card in a swap. So we've got all kinds of traditional colors here and the trees in the background and welcome home here. And these, these hearts almost look like they're coming out of the chimney, don't they? So we've got that. And then I saw this idea and I couldn't resist. So here is, I totally cased it from Cindy Lee B Designs. So she stamped it um, and then she used a white gel pen here. This bird, she used a different bird, but I went looking and I found this bird in the Sophisticated Sled. So I used the bird from there. And I don't know if you can see the post. I used the sled die and then just used part of it to make the post. And again, that twine, that's from the Natural Tones linen thread. Um, from our house to yours. And then these little snowflakes. I forgot to bring them over. Let me just grab them. They are just loose snowflakes. They're in all different sizes, but you can glue them on perfectly with the, with the multi-purpose liquid glue. And they work beautifully. And I really like how they worked on this card here. And then last but not least is I took the frame from the plant kit. So there are four frames in the kit and I took the heart from uh, Friends for Life. So this big heart here and then put the little house on it. So I think this would be perfect to make a house for every season. So we've got four frames. In fact, I think I have to buy another kit just so I have more frames to play with. Um, and four frames and four seasons, I think that would be perfect. So that being said, how many of you are in love with this bundle? I. The more I play with it, the more I love it. And I just wanted to point out while I'm here is um, if you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, but we've got these templates here. Now, some of the templates are cards, but some are tags because we know a lot of you make tags for Christmas or as I said here, tags are a great addition to a card. They're quick and easy. You can pop them on a card. So you can even look here for some layout ideas too. So um, what do you think? Do you think this is something that has potential? I love that it's suitable for all different occasions, not just Christmas. And I, I really think it would make lots of fun and I, you know what if you give them to kids to play with there would be endless ideas i must do that must give them to the this to the grandkids to play with so there are some of the ideas that i came up with and i hope you enjoyed that so if you need any product or you have any questions feel free to contact me or you can uh, go to my website lillian.stampingup.net or you can uh, use that QR code there. So thank you so much for joining me uh, and thanks too for the thumbs up and all the feedback and if you're watching on YouTube I love the feedback there too and please feel free to share. Uh, it just helps get my ideas out there. So once again thank you so much for joining me tonight and have fun crafting. Bye-bye.